Hello, hello, hello everybody and this is another instalment here of Loose Lips. We've got our third guest to feature in a few moments. He's going to be coming on to the chat uh, and we'll be getting stuck into conversation with him. We've got Ralph Lawson. Many of you will know him from being a Back to Basics resident, also uh, one of the founders, owners of 2020 Visions Recording and also a lot more recent and highly, highly much loved, it's already been taken into the hearts of the city of Leeds, is Inner City Electronic, which is a creative festival which happens uh, once a year in Leeds, which is a mixture of music related panels, uh, different workshops, and then obviously related to the electronic scene, a lot of DJ sets that are happening at various venues across the city as well. So it really does unite the world of dance, house, electronic, all under the umbrella around the city of Leeds. Ralph's just sent me his request now, so I'll accept and we'll let technology Yes, brother. Hello. Hi. Hello. Long time, mate. It feels ages. Sound up. How are you getting How on? Are you? Yeah, yeah. Good. It's quite quiet. You got. Can you turn up a bit? For me to speak to you? Yeah, yeah. Is that all right? Have you got me at maximum on yours? I think so. We'll try that. That's fine. It's all right. Fair, fair. No, good to speak to you, brother. Uh, I'm loving the backdrop as well. It's class, it's class, well played, mate. Is that in studio? Yeah, I'm, I, I basically live in, a, live in my little dungeon now. I'm right in the basement of, of my house. I've got all, like, kick chaos going up on upstairs, and I've got, like, a little bit of tranquility down here with, with my records and my machines. How have you been finding the mix of it at the moment? Obviously, with home, isolating with the family and then getting into the studio, have you found it? demanding uh, to be in both sort of worlds? Yeah, well, at the first, at first I just had to, I, I, you know, I didn't really get in the studio or get any work done. It was just like crisis, you know, it was like emergency crisis, um, you know, management. It was just like, you know, we suddenly got kids at home, we become teachers. Also, there was trying to deal with money. Suddenly there's like everything was cancelled in our game, you know, events and, DJing and live world, it was all just gone overnight. So we had to, you know, just dealing with that, just going like running around like a headless chicken for a, a week or two. And then it kind of settled down. I kind of got into it. And then, in all honesty, I quite like it now. I kind of feel, I feel quite, it's like less stress. I mean, I, <laughs> I don't know what we're going to do about money the longer it goes on. But, you know, um, you know, the weather's nice. You can still get out once a day. And, you know, I've been quite enjoying teaching and stuff. It's been all right, actually, to be honest. You put an amazing post out, and I don't know if you want to just sort of go on at that, but uh, it was based around the chocolate cake that you all made, and I just felt like there was a real, felt like a real poignant moment where you sort of took a step back and thought, you know what, the family's here, we're all chipping in together, this is a beautiful time. Yeah, I think a lot of people are appreciating that, whether you've got a family, we've all got some kind of family, haven't we? Some of us are locked in self-isolation, I can, I can imagine it must be a lonely, you know, difficult time. Um, you know, I, I've got, you know, a fairly big family here. There's three kids and the, and uh, Jane, my wife. Um, so, you know, we have got a little unit and um, it's it's actually quite nice. You know, my son came back from, from college. He was down in London. So we he's quite, he's normally away. So you just kind of back to how we were like a few years ago. You know what I mean? With everyone here. And yeah, it's, you know, I can't, you know, I, like I say, I can't, I can't get quite used to it, to be honest. Getting into the daily routine, which is just survival. It's just what we're going to eat. You know, where's what, what? You know, where can we get some money to for the next shop? And uh, but other, other than that, it's like um, you know, it's, it's going out for a bike ride or a walk in the park. And then you know, we've got a garden. Luckily, um, we, we got down in the studio. I've been making some tracks with uh, with everyone's done like a track. All, all uh, every age from like nine to nineteen's been in here and started having a little jam. So it's been all right. Yeah, that must be cool then, involving them in your world as well. Yeah, yeah, I don't normally let them in. I'm not, <laughs> yeah, I've got to, um, yeah, exactly. And it's like, you know, quite a lot of the time it is like that. It's like, I've got a gig to prepare for and it's like, you know, you know, can you, can you go and do something else? You kick them out, you know, but now it's like, okay, we've got some time. Fair enough. And it's amazing how fast they pick it up. Honestly, it's unbelievable. They'll, they, you know, they, 
it's just lovely to see that that age when their kind of minds are open and that little naivety is actually brilliant in the studio because you just you just do the same old things don't you you just get so like stuck in your ways and they come in and go like what is that doing what happens if i press this and you find some pretty cool stuff actually sometimes i'm like wow i didn't know i did that you know <laughs> so it's quite a good opportunity for you to learn you know through their naivety that's it as well and then obviously i had the pleasure of uh heading round to the lawson household uh earlier on this year when we did the open lab uh radio feature and your wife's an amazing cook so I'm, i bet you're getting stuck into that as well yeah i'm pretty your lucky coffee machine your coffee machine you that was you that was your latest hobby as well your fascination you yeah I'm, I'm on the, i'm on the coffee um jane jane's like a uh, like a caterer so she, she's her, her business is closed so we've been lucky she's been trying out stuff stuff um you know in the in the kitchen i've been getting in there you know there's a lot of, lot of cleaning up to do but you know it's um yeah it's like i say i can't can't really complain it's just how long things go on for really because then obviously money just gets tighter and tighter so for the past let's say 20 20 odd years 30 odd years i think it was 94 you said the label started is that correct 94, 95, yeah, kind of, we thought about it in 94, and I think we got the first record out in 95, yeah. I really enjoyed that Open Lab special we did. I mean, just people joining where we, me and um, Ben took a little bit of a journey through the 2020 Vision catalogue at the start of the year. And I mean, I mean, it's, it's just incredible. Like, looking back on there, it's like, a, it's a kind of like a little piece of history. It always seems like ancient history. It's like that, Those two months have been like 20 years, haven't they? It's like, you know, I listen back to it, it's just full of positivity, isn't it? Like about the new year, what we can do. And then all of a sudden, like, it all comes crashing down. And like, you know, it's just, it's in a whole different world. So, you know, I, I do really love that piece. And it would be a very different piece if we'd done it like this week, wouldn't we? We nice. did it in early January, I think, didn't we? Yeah. Um, for open the radio in, in Ibiza, and it's like a two and a half hour special. We selected tracks from the, the label's history and we had a chat about it. But I, I really like that format. I'll definitely do it again. Um, I think I will try and start a podcast or something uh well you know we did, the idea was there already but i think now you know it, there's a little bit of technology needed isn't there to be honest i found it it's like it's been i was a little bit late to the party this is actually the first time i've done a a live little stream you know i know every dj's been streaming and like some people like it some people don't i just think it's good to connect and keep the communication going and you know i didn't see anything wrong with it but the problem was everything sold out i went online you can't even get a webcam you can't, I just need like some stupid little adapter, some stupid little cam link um, converter. I need. For, I've got. I've got like an old GoPro, and like you can't get them. People are selling <laughs> them for like double the price on eBay, and I'm just like, you're kidding me. It's a tiny little adapter. It's like 250 quid. And so I was like, well, okay, I'll, I'll do some streaming, but like, you know, when, when, you know, when, I, when I can get the right the right gear, then. So I finally just found like um, like a Logitech webcam that looks pretty decent. Um, so that's that should be coming. Soonish, so you, and I think so you are just, delve um, into the world. Yeah, and then jump, um, jump on the decks and have a go. Yeah, good man, good man. And then what about the podcast then? Because uh, I was speaking with Tristan last week, and he mentioned that you did a real good blog. I was speaking to him about um, residents, and does he feel that with the lack of weekly sort of nights that we sort of losing out on the 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 essential resident, you know, the residents are really important for me uh, to club structure. You go there and it's because of the music policy that they create, it's the world. And then the guests are almost the bonus on that. Whereas now I feel that nightlife sort of geared towards the bigger events where you go and there's two, three big acts on a lineup. And then very rarely do you see that resident side. So I, he mentioned that you did a blog on that and I don't know if you want to touch on that, but I, I also... Now, knowing that you've got the podcast uh, equipment to hand, do you think that the blog could step over and translate into a podcast now? Yeah, absolutely. The blog is very much writing. Um, I'm a secret writer. I actually, I actually really like writing. I find it very easy. Um, I don't know why, but like, I think, I think DJing and doing mixes, I've always seen it is like kind of like a little journey and a little, it is like a little bit of writing. It's a little piece. And that's how I've always seen them. I, I'm, I'm actually, I personally think I'm less good as a producer in the studio making tracks. I'm better kind of playing other people's tracks. Uh, and I, I find it like writing quite similar, to be honest. So I think the blog just came about. I wanted to kind of record some of the history from the club I was resident DJ at, Back to Basics at. I've been there a long time and I just felt some of this needed to be kind of like, um, put into words and I wanted to capture some photos and mixes and 
so the blog came out of that called a basic vision um and then with an M. yeah I, I think that for me in my head that's kind of its own thing it's its own identity um the piece that you're talking about yeah i wrote a piece on resident djs when i decided to finally leave back to basics at the start of the year in january that's that was kind of fresh start to the year i just felt my time was over i'd done my you know i spent my energy there i've been there 28 years you know what i mean so i just wanted like new you know, new projections i just just didn't have any more energy for that that kind of idea really um um, so for me, it's quite rooted in the past. So if I did a podcast, actually, I want to do it under the name Exit Planet Earth, because that's the project I'd already started for this year, which you came to the very first one to present. And then we did a series of mixes, didn't we? And we live streamed that. We were before our time. We were before our time. <laughs> we live streamed, didn't we? Like before all this stuff from Sheaf Street and Leeds, which was, a, which was really good fun. I enjoyed that. And, um, and I think I'd like to continue that. But for now, I think it would have to be from home. You know what I mean? What do you feel the format would be then linking the two worlds? The, you know, the Exit Planet Earth into the podcast? Because I know, and for people watching, the way that Exit Planet Earth came around, that's an interesting story as well as to why you sort of come up with that idea. So do you want to share that as well? And then do you think that's what the podcast would lean on? As in the final, what would people's final song be? I'm not sure if I can quite tell you the format yet. You know it, but I don't think we'll say it. I don't think we'll say it on air quite yet. I, I know two words. <laughs> and I, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of people streaming out there. Next week there'll be there'll be some show with the same idea. So I think we'll keep the actual, you know, little. Uh, I think we'll keep that under wraps for now a little bit. Um, but it will definitely be spacey. <laughs> but it's not just about space. It's more about the idea. That, I mean, I had this idea to be honest a way back three, four years ago, the idea of like leaving the planet and it was all getting a little crazy. You know, it's not, it's not just like this current crisis we've been dealing with. I mean, it's been crazy for years here. We've been dealing with madmen ruling the planet and they are normally men and um, you know, Brexit and that whole backdrop and Trump. And I was just like, this is nuts. I'll oh, get me out of here. And I lo- it's a beautiful, beautiful planet, but we're making a mess of it, aren't we? And like, I just hope that something that comes out of coronavirus is that, that everyone stopped to think, of, you know, the things like this, that we do appreciate our planet and, um, you know, that we that, that, that it's been interesting to see the effects on climate change, hasn't it? Like mm. the reports of like, you know, animals and the, and the natural world are making a big comeback when humans ease off a bit. Like, you know, so I'm not down on humans. We're, we, you know, we're incredible, aren't we? We've done amazing things, but just like, you know, we, we are making a mess and it's time to clear it up and it's time to take some responsibility for our actions and going forward. Um, but the idea I think I still like is that one day we'll have to get off, you know, you know the, one day it might, be in the, it might be in the distant future, it might be nearer than you think. But the thing I think I realised about coronavirus is you don't know when, it, when the end is going to come. You don't know when the shit's going to hit the fan. It could be tomorrow. Like suddenly your life, the world's changed overnight. It, it was just such a short space of time. You know, one week it was business as usual. The next minute it was, it was chaos, you know, worldwide. So... I've, it, you know, I'm going to prepare my spaceship. I'm starting now, Ben. It's going to take a while. You know, Elon's got, you know, Elon's doing a good job, isn't he? But, you know, I think he's going to charge a bit, don't you? So I think, you know, maybe we can get on there. It's like, you know, DJs and presenters to cheer cheer up the scientists on their way. I'll take that. I'll take on the Tesla yeah. payroll. <laughs> yeah. But apparently it was flying over Leeds last night. Was, a space was it? Yeah, yeah, someone told me. That. You know what? I saw, I saw them. And it was clear skies. Yeah. Should have, yeah. Should, should have a telescope. There. So the, the reason I, I sort of uh, alluded to when the label started is because for, yeah, good part of 20 plus years, 2020 has been synonymous with your life. And now we're in 2020. Could you ever imagine? Up. Could, you, could you ever imagine <laughs> it would be how it oh. is? Yeah, where's where, where do I where's my where's the returns for where do, where do I get my money back? No, you You're only twenty twenty one. Everyone's jumped can up. I, can, I, can I can I sue a virus? Um, yeah, Jesus, wow! It's like um, they pro, if they kind of like um, you predicted exactly what you wouldn't want to happen in twenty twenty. That was pretty much it, or any other year though. But you know what? I mean, it could have been driving me mad, Ben. I literally could have just been down here just sending myself nuts. And the weird thing is, I've just refused to like even yeah. let it enter my head at all. I don't, it's a weird thing. Like, I just, it's not even like I'm trying hard. I've literally just shut the door. And it's kind of like, well, people are dying here. And there's people in a lot worse situation than you. It's not about you. It's not about the numbers. 
And in a way, it's a little bit of a release from that. Because at the start of the year, I was going out. And every person I met was just going, oh, Ralph, yeah, Ralph, 2020, it's your year, blah, it's your, what are you going to do, what you do, it's your year, and all of this. And I was just, it was getting a bit much already, to be honest. I was like, oh, you know, because the thing I learned, like, really early on was, like, never be flavour of the month. But all these DJs come up and they'd be like straight away, like, you know, me, 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 here's, uh, I'm, you know, I'm on Insta, where's my gigs, all the, you know, giving it all the large, and like, and it's like, you know, then they, they weren't there the next day. You know, if you want to be in this game for a long time, I learned to play the long game, you know what I mean? And it's, um, you know, all, this, all I was kind of in the back of my mind thinking, well, everyone goes, well, if it's your year this year, what happens next year? So that's not a problem now, is it? They, they totally fucked up the, my, my, my supposed year. So we better get some, we better, we better make some new plans, basically. Yeah, 2020 plus one. Plus one, I like that. 2020 plus one. <laughs> I also, on the back of that, and another thing that came across in our Open Lab uh, conversation was that, you really do look forward. You, you're not you, you're not really one to sort of like be doused in nostalgia. I think you're you're proud of what you've done, obviously, because it's a, a great back catalogue and it, it's giving you the the position you have. But you're always forward thinking. You're always looking forward. Bloody better be now. <laughs> <laughs> God knows what's going to happen. There's a new idea. There's a new theory every day, isn't there? Um, yeah. Yeah, I think we do need to be really forward thinking, right? And um, I just hope we can inject some positivity into that forward thinking. I mean, it's it could be, you know, a very scary, scary place, and we're going to be confronted with like a lot of a lot of heavy shit. Everyone is, um, and so I do hope that we can like you know come together and like you know inject inject that positivity in, in in every realm of life, not just people like you and me into like comedy and music and the arts, but like you know from like all the technology the people that are at the forefront of tech, what, what, what can we do in that world to, 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 to help, you know, help the situation, energy, and, and um, like energy, energy, resources, climate, you know, the whole thing is like, I think you're on, you're either on the bus or you're off the bus now, aren't you? You'd be like, take some responsibility for your actions and, you know, it, it, and, 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 you know, make this, make this, uh, make this better after this. And if we don't, I think all those lives have gone to waste. It's like, insu- yeah. it's like a, it's like a insulting, really, you know, why, for all those people and all those amazing care workers that put themselves in the front line. It's kind of, I think, I find it kind of insulting if nothing changes, you know. Fair point, fair point. Do you think that the clubbing scene, uh, festivals, live gatherings, do you think that that's going to uh, have a prolonged change moving forward? Or do you think it'll, it'll get back to how it was? Yeah, I, I think it's going to take a while, mate. It's been really, really hit. I mean, you know, most of my friends are in in the industry, in the music industry, and a lot. Most people do live events and festivals, and most are cancelled. And what you want to understand, or maybe people don't really quite realise, is you know that one event play, pays all the staff for for the entire year. It doesn't just happen. These are huge, huge projects that involve often, you know, a lot of people working all year. And then suddenly they've done all that work for nothing and it's gone and their income's gone and they're getting furloughed. And they're like, you know, what are we going to do here? It's, it's a really difficult situation um, for everybody. I know, I know venue owners that are, st- that are there with their empty venues. You know, I know DJs with no gigs. I mean, it's just, it's just the whole kind of things come crashing down. And it's kind of like, okay, we can stream and we can communicate. That's more, I think, about like, you know, keeping the music going and like, just, just you know, having having that, as I said, like music as communication, which is for me the most important thing. Um, you know, just just being able to 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 do your craft, to 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 practice your chops and play for people. That's what we like doing. But it doesn't it doesn't at the minute really, you know, solve the financial situation for for anyone. Um, so you know, I think people want to go out still. I think they'll want to go to events. I mean, they'll be gagging at a bit, and everyone wants to go out. But I think it will take a while. And I think there might be certain um, restrictions that that, that that are kept in place longer than most. I mean, we'll probably be the last to come back. You know, they'll have schools, they'll have like non-essential workers go back to work, kickstart the economy. And, you know, I think pubs, clubs and restaurants will will be down the line. Fair play, fair play. Yeah. And interestingly enough, within a city electronic, it's always been sort of the first of June or the start of June. And then, you decided to move it to March, and I remember speaking to you going, what's me? 
<laughs> you putting it in March? That's crazy what you're doing. Yeah. Hold on out there. But all jokes aside, you know, how did it go this year? Because obviously I weren't able to be about. I think it had a, a special sort of air about it with obviously the passing of Andrew Weatherall. And it just felt like from the videos and the, the message that I, I uh, heard and received back from it, it really felt more of a unit. It, it really like brought everybody together this year. Yeah, I mean, just to just to deal with the date change first. I mean, there's like it's not just me at Inner City. There's like five uh, active directors, and that it was a decision that you know was taken, you know, across across all the everyone, and it wasn't taken lightly. I mean, I really like that June date. It's not like we hadn't thought about it. We'd already obviously when you start a festival, you look at the dates, don't you? And we'd already like we'd already pinpointed that June day as 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 the space, as the one, as the place to be in the summer calendar, because after that weekend because basically you know it, it is it does it does evolve a lot around students your students exams finish then there was just that one weekend after bank holiday which people have traditionally left because it's bank holiday the previous weekend which is a massive weekend so so quite often like that that that's not such a good weekend but then after that you got park life got wood then it just goes on and on and on all summer so we said well it's that weekend it's a bit of a risk and we might get a knock on from bank holiday but let's try it. And, it, and then we kind of carved out our little space there. And then the idea came up was like, well, listen, let's, let's try and move because we can't really do some of the things we want to do because a lot of people go, a lot of people left the city, you know, we're based in Leeds, which is a huge college town and a lot of, a lot of students have left. Um, it, and, um, and we kind of wanted to get into the, the conference at Leeds College of Music. Uh, it was like, you know, we wanted to be quite, quite like, you know, we had, we didn't, you know, we had ideas, we have ideas for it to be like, you know, we got grand ideas, ambitions, we want it to be part of the city, to be some a big thing like Sonar, Primavera or ADE, you know what I mean? We're not really messing about, we want to do something big for the city, for Leeds. And then, you know, we said, well, this date is possible. You could get into the colleges, people haven't got exams, and there might be a bit of space there. And obviously what we do though is, you know, you never know what the Yorkshire weather will be like, but um, we, we, we had hit two beautiful days both years so but at some point it's, you're gonna get you're gonna get pissed on aren't you so we we had open air activities which and events which have been great you know we lost a lot of that for march but at the same time the big winners were the conference and um you know i really thought that, that this year in leeds college of music it was it was brilliant and um what we've been doing in the downtime is actually working on the content so we've been working with the film the video team to get all the all the films together and then and then we've nearly we nearly sorted that now. So there's some really nice films there, which I think are really, uh, during this time are actually like really poignant. There's a, there's a really good one about climate change and what we can do and that already, because coronavirus was already just, it was there, it was already in Asia. There was a few cases. You remember we were on March the 7th, so, so we were literally on the cusp of all this, but still at a point in the UK where we were being a little bit dismissive. Wow, I think we were, a bit, um, we were a little bit overconfident, weren't we, looking back. And, um, but at the time, we just didn't, we didn't know. So, um, you know, we would, there are some chats that start to mention like, you know, what's it going to be like, but you know, it's, which is interesting to look back on, but they're still very relevant, I think. And there's a, there's a really lovely tribute to Andrew Weatherall who died just previously, which, uh, you know, I, I really love. We just got that back today. Final version, hopefully. Um, there's a great chat from Weirdcore who, who works with Aphex Twin and Radio, um, Radiohead, not Radioactive Man. And um, there's a great talk on the importance of sound. There's some really good, there's a panel about working in music. People can find jobs in music, which I think is going to be really relevant coming out of this. You know, how can you, how can people find, you know, different jobs they might not have thought of? Um, so there's a whole series of talks, which I think is much I'm super, super pleased about having now that we might not have had in June because everyone would have just been outside having a party. You know what I mean? You don't want to go and have a talk when the sun's shining. And there's that Motor City drum ensemble playing in Leeds Square, do you? It's true. <laughs> how do you how do you create uh, or come up with the topics of the panels? How do uh, we work it out? Like, we, decide we, decide it we, we 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 bat it around, we brainstorm. People come up with ideas, and it, you know, I didn't feel like it was ever like some big meeting. We just batted about ideas, and then it was like, oh, that's good, that's good, that's good. You know, we try and be quite like. You know, um, you know, quite upbeat. We try and keep quite, quite positive, and I think we don't like try and 
kill ideas. Like an idea comes up, don't just like kill it dead because you don't agree with it. Just let it sit for a while. Has it got legs? Has it? I just feel like these things naturally have legs or they don't. It just peters out rather than tell someone like, you know, that's a shit idea. <laughs> you can just like let it bat around for a bit until it kind of just peters off. One of the uh, blessings that I've been fortunate to be bestowed with is doing some of the live master classes. So I did Octave One, I did Kink. Is yeah. there anybody else on the hit list who you'd really love to have in that environment who you think would be amazing? Yeah, well, we, 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 had a, we had a couple this year booked, which was Kosh and Detroit in Effect. Kosh has turned into an interview um, and Detroit in Effect was held up in Milan because he was in Northern Italy, right at the peak of uh, it all. So he was um, in self-isolation. He made it to the gig, but he didn't, um, he didn't make it to do that. Um, so, you know, though they would have been both great. Um, yeah, there's, there's countless people. We did, um, we did Orbital this year, but not as a, as a, um, as a um, masterclass. We did it as a How I Play Live for DJ Magazine. So that was filmed. That's going to come out soon. Um, there's tons, isn't there? You know, there's, there's, there's loads of great live, live acts, you know. I'd love to do some live electro. What about Radioactive Man Live? That'd be great, wouldn't it? You know, or the, full bands, you know, there's full bands that use, use electronics, you know. I don't know. Caribou, anyone. <laughs> I just, yeah, I just wanted to peek in and see if there was like, a, you know, an essential top five or something like that. Where you feel no, like I haven't thought about it. But I mean, at, at the moment, it's basically who's playing at the festival. Because <laughs> then we just taught them into doing a masterclass, you know. And then how far in advance are like, are you already planning for next year's and do you think it'll stay in March? Um, I'm planning in my head, but I don't think we press the trigger until things get a bit clearer because you just really don't know. In the in the news I read something different every day, you know. Um, you know, one one week one one day I read um that Germany's opening, you know, for uh, opening doors and thinking of um you know, maybe opening in August. France is doing the Tour de France the end of August. That's a mass event. Two million people go to the Tour de France, so they must be thinking of opening up. Um, but I, I just don't think any of us know when when clubs will open in the UK yet. I know I know a lot of friends with venues that would you know trying to trying to plan from September. So you'd hope you'd hope that we'd start being able to to do some stuff from 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 middle late August September. You'd hope, but. You just don't know, do you? So I think we'll just we'll just have to wait and see for a few weeks before we start planning for next year. And then I suppose the last couple from me then is uh, in your in your downtime if you are in the studio. Do you feel there's a an adverse? You said earlier on that there's not a pressure to be in the studio, but do you feel like, for example, the DJ streams. Everybody seems to be active. Everybody seems to be doing something. Do you feel there's a, like a, a a weird sort of pressure? to be seen to be doing something or does that not exist to you? Are you almost like... Yeah, no, I think you're definitely right. I think I think it does, doesn't it? It's kind of like, as a DJ, I've always felt that pressure. You, you're selling yourself, right? And you, you're defined by your name. You know, your name's on the tin. Um, you know, you, and, and that's, that's, that's your bread and butter as you go through life. You know, if you lose respect or, you know, you lose your way a bit, it, 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 it soon... You, it soon kind of tail, tailors off, gigs tailor off, don't they? So you have to kind of really kind of keep yourself in the game. And I think absolutely. I think DJs and artists are really feeling that pressure that, you know, I've got to keep my profile up. I've got to keep in the game here. Um, maybe if that's the best reason to want to go and do a live stream or not, uh, you know, I don't know, but it, it creates a lot of live streaming. Um, I personally think, you know, it's a little bit cynical to say it's a bad thing. I mean, I don't really, how's it, you know, what's, what's really bad about it? I mean, music is communication. And if people want to get out there and like, you know, play some tunes with people, how, I don't see, I've, I've, I've seen some negativity about it, but I don't really understand it. I mean, what's the problem? What's the big deal? Okay, so lots of people are doing it. Well, if anything, I think it's, 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 it's created um, more of a, you know, kind of equal footing because just like Joe Bloggs can set up a camera and have a mix and then, and, you know, and, and, and get an airing when they probably can't get a gig in the clubs, which is actually like quite nice, isn't it? You know, you know I might yeah. find an artist that I, I, I don't know that's got a chance to play live now um they could have sent me a demo of course they could would i've listened to it maybe not you know i'd like to try and get through as much as i can but you don't listen to everything so um you can flick on a live stream 
and see and you might find some maybe there's, there's going to be some new stars created from the puzzle isn't there you know so um I, the only thing for me is kind of keeping the quality up i'm i'm just like i'm 100 percent about quality i just i just don't like doing shoddy work at all anything i do if i go make a cup of tea it's going to be a good cup of tea you know what i mean i just i just don't like doing things badly it just annoys me so if, if i was going to do streaming i was just really sure that you know I wasn't just going to have a bad sound quality or a rubbish camera angle. I just need to, I've got, I've got, a, you know, there's a nice, I'll, I'll pan the camera around. I mean, I've got a nice little setup here and, you know, um, I've got ideas how we could do it and it would look good. And, you know, that's, that's, that's how I prefer to do it. And I, I also think everyone just seems to think, well, I'm live streaming and I'm a DJ, so I've got to do a DJ mix, but do you? Could you not like put on a record and have a little chat about that record, or you could not... you let people into like what's going on a bit more? And it's amazing you know, like this, like this. So I think there's the I think there's that. This is now the opportunity to open up a bit, isn't it? And have a, have a chat and, and connect. You know, when, when you see the biggest song. DJs in the world, when you see Carl Cox in his underpants doing the stream, you know what I mean? It's like <laughs> it's anything. It's going for anybody, isn't it? No, you're right. And I think it is, it's finding that connection why certain artists or DJs love a certain song that they're playing. I was watching Jarvis Cocker do his live stream on Friday or Saturday and I was just engaged because he'd do a few mixes and then he'd just stop and he'd chat and he's got a good chat. Yeah. It, was, it was just funny. It was, just, it was a nice, it was almost like a bizarre radio show. Like it was really quirky how he was doing it, but it was really, really good. And I agree, I think it's the insight and the it's the it's the rapport and the connectivity and the interaction that that engages people to want to remain and see a different side of it so yeah i think i'm on, i'm looking forward to seeing it if you do a live stream because you are thinking outside the box and i think there are other ways to freshen yeah. the idea up yeah well i really like the ones we did at shoe street we thought about it then haven't we but that's when you've got like a really well set up club um you can still find those that uh, we did we created a youtube channel called exit planet earth i'd like to just add to that but like, you know, that was quite, we started off with like the bar quite high, didn't we? We had like you presented, the idea was there, wasn't it? This was back in what, October last year? Yeah, yeah. And then so we had you along to kind of have a little chat with the artists, not just like a club format. It was, okay, well, we're streaming and we're recording. So let's have a little chat. And everyone had talked about their set a bit. And then, you know, obviously we had, we got the like visual artists in. Because I mean, what, what, people, what you're doing with streaming, isn't it? I can just go and record a mix tomorrow and throw it up on SoundCloud or MixCloud, right? So if, you, if you're streaming, what you're saying is, look at me. And if you're going to, yeah. but the, the whole thing about it is we do, we, we're going like that, aren't we? You know, it's, it's not that interesting to look at. So what are you going to do? It's like, you know, um, the visual element is interesting, isn't it? So obviously we're, in, we're, all, we're on our own. So not many, not many people can like a uh, visual artist as well as DJ some are, but like, you know, maybe there's a way to kind of like make it look visually more fun, but the easiest way for me, because, I like a chat like you is probably to turn it a little bit into a podcast, a little bit into a radio show. It's somewhere in, in between. And that's, that's probably the, the way I'd go with it. Yeah. So the final two from me then, ah, um, I read these posts that you put out when you were uh, saying that you were stepping aside uh, from back to basics and just yeah. the plethora and list of people that you played alongside was, it's insane. What, could you sort of take us through that time? Because some of the names, it went from, even when you had Dust Brothers, so that was pre-Chemical Brothers, uh, Daft Punk were on there, like the biggest of biggest names all coming through the city of Leeds and you've been playing alongside them. Like, can you and it was them? all on me. <laughs> <laughs> no one else. Nah, I knew, you know, obviously it was Dave Beer's club and his baby and he was the promoter and all the resident DJs are like massive, massive part of it. Um, I mean, you, you, you were going on about the resident DJ piece and that, that piece was connected to the post you're talking about, um, about, about leaving the club. And it was very much saying, well, actually, there's all these guests have been at the club and they have been the biggest ones in dance music. Um, but it was more about the residents for me. You know, we produced such a steady flow of amazing resident DJs from, from the city. And that I just think that was really the heart of it. And, I, and what I was saying was, it's just I feel I really feel like we've lost that you know it's all become so event based and those events got bigger and bigger and everyone just goes to festivals and everyone just goes to like 
um, warehouse projects or print works, and which are fantastic events. And you go there, they're unbelievable. I mean, the production's incredible, the lighting's incredible, you know, the DJs are great. Um, and all I was just kind of saying as well, but, but actually, like, you know, house music is community and house music is um, connection and communication and, you know, getting together with your mates, like, a, you know, it was nearly like a working men's club. You'd all get together every week and have a beer or, maybe something else and then you know and it would it would go from there then you'd get on the floor and you'd dance and you'd crawl out of there at silly o'clock in the morning and it was just such a regular thing and I think you know I do think we're kind of missing that um a little bit so I think I'd like to see in that piece what I said was I think it's going to become you know more the time again when people will go back to those regular clubs without having to have that big name DJ because um, it's not economical for clubs. It was getting to the point where clubs are having to spend big, 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 big dollar to get that guest in, to pull the people in. And then, but they, but, and then sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't, but they're still taking like all the money. Then there's no money left for the developing the local talent for the, for the venue owners. And then it's, it's not a sustainable model. So maybe in a way this crisis has said, well, we've been talking about this, but now it really isn't the model. It can't, it's not going to be like this anymore because we can't do this anymore you know we, we want to get up and running and we want to work again and we want everyone working again but we can't we can't pay out those kind of fees you know everyone's going to have to like get in this yeah. together and like you know uh and 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 and, and, and i think you know, that that will that will become really really important but I, what i think what would be nice is especially for the smaller clubs is they get off the ground with 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 nights like Back to Basics was, which was a regular night run by, and it was it was about coming to that night because you knew the ethos, you knew what the people behind it were like. They were going to be on the floor having a pint with you. You were going to see your friends, and you trusted them to put on a great guest. We could put on like the most obscure DJ from Berlin that no one had ever heard of before. They came into that club. By the end of the night, they'd all heard a great set. We knew that, but you know, it, it's more interesting for me to get on those the fresh talent and the people that are really on their game and really hot, and like playing a great set. And it's going to blow your mind. That's way, that's why I went to clubs. You know, if I'm going to go to a club to see a, a big guest, they, they better be bloody good to be honest. And let's face it. Sometimes they're disappointing. Sometimes they're great, you know? So I just like to, to think when we come back that, that community feeling will, will be there again, you know, and that's what back to basic sport to, to leads. How do you find the scouting of that? The scouting, scouting of new talent. Yeah, the scouting of new talent. How, how do you stay on top and, and abreast with that? Ask my son. <laughs> he's, only, <laughs> he's only 19. He knows all that stuff. Um, <laughs> no, I mean, honestly, yeah, you just, I keep on top of it as much as I can, but I mean, it's, it's, it's what record labels have been doing for years, and I come from record labels. It's called A&R. It's artist repertoire, and it's a job. It's a job. People are, you know, you have people on the firm that are really on it. They go, you know, quite often, they, you know, someone working in a record store is a great place to start because they're on top of the records, you know, they, they, that's coming in every week. So I quite, you know, um, you know, quite often um, A&R people come from, from record stores and, and at 2020, it was Tristan Takuna. So Tristan did an amazing job for a long time at 2020 vision before he started his own projects, Dungeon Meat, Freakenstein. Um, he would, yeah. He, and it was Tristan and he'd come in every Wednesday and he'd, he'd, he'd help out and he'd say, listen to this, this, and this, and have you checked this person? And, and that's, that's, it's, it, you need, you know, you need a few people on the firm. And, um, you know, Tristan, Tristan bought Motor City Drum Ensemble to the, to the, to the project, to the, to the label. So, you know, um, yeah, you need, you need some ears. You need more ears than your own. That's for sure. You need a team. And, and the final one from me is what is, oh, hey, oh, sorry. Before I go to my last ones, uh, Benjamin Rufus White has said, any chance of a 2020 sound system reunion? <laughs> um, it's funny when, when, when you have these the shit, it's the fam like it does now. I don't, I don't know if it's happened with you, but I think there's been, a, everyone's been like getting in touch with all their, their real friends and their old friends. Have you done yeah. that? I've, yeah. that? Suddenly like you wanted to connect suddenly, didn't you? With like, Everyone has been important to you along the way, like school friends. And yeah. obviously the band was a massive, they were all really important people. And they weren't my friends. They were friends. You know, so Fernando and, and Julian were from Argentina. And now Julian's now in Colombia. He's got a family. Fernando's in, in Buenos Aires. Buenos Aires. And um, 
still can't say it after all these years. And then, uh, <laughs> and and Danny is in in Manchester, so we're we're geographically very quite far apart. So probably not is the answer um, going forward. Um, you know, would it be possible to do some shows? Yes, it would. Would it be possible to make make some tunes? Yes, it would. Um, I did. It did come up. Fernando mentioned it. I mentioned it. You know, um, not so long ago. Um, and you know, I don't know if you saw the Rolling Stones play. Did you see the Rolling Stones on yeah, this big? So they did it in separate rooms. And they did it. In, they did it all in isolation. It was quite tight, wasn't it? It was yeah, actually yeah. like pretty amazing. I thought, you know. No, I, I, it's another uh, artist that I follow, Anderson Pack. Uh, yeah, I know. the Free Nationals. They did it on Jimmy yeah. Fallon, and it was just so tight. It was unbelievable. So it can so, be done. You know, it can be. What, done. What's going to come out of this is like I think what he, what you got to realize is it's like. Excuse me. It's like. Like streaming's not going to go away. It's not just like here's something, like while we're in lockdown. This is just the tip of the iceberg. This is just like people are going to get it. They're going to get their setups, and it's and it, and it's going to continue. And they, you know, obviously something like Boiler Room's been massive, but like that's that's one format, isn't it? You know, what other formats are out there? You know, um, and what shows what can come out of it? And like, you know, um, you know, I, I think I think that the you know that connectivity. We'll, 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 we'll stick around. It will stick around because, you know, we're not, it, even once we're out of lockdown, people aren't going to have enough money to travel for a start. There's going to be less travel. People are going to be worried about traveling. I just, I just think it's going to take quite a while before, or if ever, you get back to that international circuit that was happening, you know, um, will it, it's all become more local. It's, you know, so you want to make your own space good. You want to focus on your locality, on your city, like make your space better. And, you know, and, 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 and that's, that's city-wide, isn't it? But it's also in our own space, you know. So um, I think you can see like, um, you know, a real rise in all this stuff, you know. And you, I, I don't know if you caught, um, I, 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 cap, I copied you into like um, a post from Twitch, someone at Twitch. Did you see that? They're looking for like com comedians and comedy shows on Twitch. Oh, no, no, no. Twitch obviously started as like a gamer platform. And people would just like, you know, show them, show them being like, you know, badass at Minecraft or um, Fortnite or COD or something. But like, you know, they, but that format's still there. It's starting to get picked up by DJs and um, musicians, and they they want Twitch want that. They're, they're looking for comedy shows. I I tagged you in. So, um, they 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 someone one of the producers was looking for people. I said, check you out. I don't know if you saw that. You should go back on Twitter. Find oh, it. Nice one, nice one. And, You're um, always looking at what me up. So like I think you know, I I think expect... a lot of these shows will come online. And then that would do like, you know, a lot of the work for people like me at record companies and, and, and programmers and festivals. Cause you know, now we can, I mean, is it, is it not a little, like a little bit more egalitarian when someone can just put their webcam on and do a six set and then, you know, they could send me a link and say, check my set out. I, I can go and have a quick blast, you know, and um, it might be a really good way of finding new artists, you know, Interesting. I like the way that you're looking at it through the eyes of how it's evolving and how it can benefit. So that's really come out of that, uh, the conversation for me. The final one from me is, what do you put the record label's longe longevity down to and what's its future direction? Uh, longevity is just, I'm um, fucking patient. <laughs> uh, Jesus Christ. I don't know. I've got patience of a saying putting up with uh, the crazy demands of artists. <laughs> um, I don't know why, yeah, I've just, um, I'm kind of very dedicated, I suppose. I suppose the moment you lose your energy and, you, and your passion, it's all over. And that's that's what I felt at Back to Basics. I'd done it for so long, 28 years. And every year, but I always had ideas. It was always like, okay, the next thing, here's another venue, here's a, we can do this, we can. And then it got to a point when after church, the venue kind of like, um, getting bought and um, coming to an end. Um, it was kind of like, I've, I've got no more energy for this. I'm done. You know what I mean? But I've, I've, I've still got plenty of energy for 2020 vision. Uh, might have to change my name. <laughs> but <laughs> I've, got, I've, got, I've got, you know, I've got some energy. I've got plenty of energy, plenty of ideas. And I'm ex really, actually really, really excited. I, I actually, I don't know if it's because I'm quite optimistic outlook in general, but I, I, I do believe we'll come out, out of this with a, with a very interesting world. Um, there'll be a lot of opportunities. There'll be a lot of hardship, 
and it won't be easy and a lot of people will be out of work. Um, but finding maybe new avenues um, will be the challenge, you know, and there'll be, there'll, there will be new avenues out there, you know. Perfect. Perfect. Ralph, it's always a pleasure catching up. It's always a pleasure getting to chat. Thank you for your time. Uh, yeah. And uh, safety to you and your fam as well. And then once this is all done, I look forward to catching up in person and seeing how we can have a proper chat about getting some podcasts started and stuff. We'll have to do it remotely. This is this works. It's our trial. We tried we tried the open lab thing, didn't we? And it worked. We said, well, it, we didn't know how to do it, did we? And we yeah. worked it out. Yeah, we, we did found a way to do it in, in an afternoon, didn't we? Like, so what we'll have to do is we'll have to do like the Rolling Stones. We'll have to do like yeah. Uh, like Zoom cam, cam one, cam two, then bring bring the mix bring the mix in on cam three and you're away, aren't you? Zoom cam would work. But the only thing I've noticed then is um, I noticed that there was, there were some people asking questions as we went. I don't know if there's anything. Yeah, all right, I'll is. scroll sorry mate, I'll do that. I'll scroll That's not me, I just don't want to have people come on and they ask a question and we didn't answer it, you know what I mean? No, fair right. Let's see where we're at. See these people, Ralph and Manet people. Right, we've got <laughs> Where does Ralph see inner city going and developing? That's from Nathan. Um, well, we always wanted to really bring the city to life, you know, bring Leeds to life. And um, I don't know if people know, but Leeds is going for like city of culture 2023. Um, it's not European city culture 20, 2023 anymore because of Brexit. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> screwed that one up. But interestingly enough, Leeds is still going to be seat of culture 2023. And it's done great things for cities like Liverpool, Hull, mm. uh, many others. Um, so that is now more the kind of focus about, you know, the long term planning is what can we do for 2023, especially when 2020 has basically been cancelled, which should have been a fucking great year. So if they're taking taking my year away, then I've got to got to think big somewhere else so let's let's go let's change the numbers have 23 as our lucky number instead um and lay i think we'll i think we'll try and think about what we can do with a three-year plan i'd like to continue at leeds college of music i'd like to think big about how we can become a part of the city um how we can bring people back into the city like you know travel's going to be a big thing the economy is going to be a big thing. We've got to kickstart our venues. We've got to kickstart clubs, venues, bars, restaurants in the city. And that needs people. So, um, you know, in a city I see as, 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 as a way to bring people back in, back into the city. Um, it's, it's, it, you know, maybe it won't just be for electronic music fans. You know, in a city electronic, maybe, maybe we'll broaden our outlook. You know, maybe we'll think about food, art, all sorts of things. But, you know, maybe... Uh, Maybe I shouldn't say say much more for now. <laughs> Do you feel that there could be um, ad hoc in a city events to help sort of tie it in, or do you think you're just going to stick to that brand as an annual and no sort of smaller scale events? Uh, no, well, we we, we work. It was already, it was already the plan to do to do presents. I mean, we already worked with Leeds International Festival. We had John Hook Hopkins. We were going to present John Hook in a, in, a, in a couple of weeks' time in the in a beautiful pink tent outside the Tetley building. That's yeah. sadly cancelled. I was really looking forward to that one. That had been like quite a tough job to get him as well. He's not an easy artist to to pin down. So I was so pleased when when we managed to get him. But um, so that's disappointing. But he's been great. He's been absolutely great. And we he did promise us the next. Leeds show, so we'll, we'll 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 hold him to that and hopefully represent that show um, sooner rather than later, but it might be a while. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then we were in discussions with Light Night. We were going to do something for Light Night. Um, I'm not quite sure what's going to happen there, but I would definitely like to, to to be part of. I just want. I just think we could be part of those big things that happen in the city. We can be, we can bring it together and we can be their kind of like you know electronic music arm. And then, um, you know, I'm happy for them to use us for our knowledge and our connections. And um, at the same time, I think we're quite useful for them, you know. I've got one which, uh, and I will go through some other questions, but do you think there'd ever be scope for uh, another, like, love parade? That was crazy, wasn't it? Yeah. 
when you think about um, it, it was crazy. It was literally, that is sort of the other word to describe that, that. That's literally down from my house. You know what I mean? I live in Round Egg. That's in the park, like down there. Um, a million and then people. You walk down, and I took a walk down in the morning of it. And it was 2000. It was the year 2000. Yeah. And it was, um, there was all these like floats like lined up down my street. I was just like, I can't get my head around this. I literally can't get my head around Because we've had bands there. We've had like um, Ed Sheeran and, and Robbie Williams and stuff like that. But, you know, not really my bag, to be honest. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but like, you know, but when Love Parade turned up, it was, it was just like unbelievable, wasn't it? I, I, I think you could open up the park. I think you could. I don't think it's Love Parade, is it? Because that kind of went, you know, they, they had that unfortunate event where people got crushed in the tunnel when they tried to franchise it to another city. I think, was it Frankfurt? Or, I can't remember. But um, yeah, I think, I think Love Parade's probably had its, had its moment as far as the brand going up side the idea itself. But yeah, the idea itself is, is good, isn't it? I. I, I, I'm up for that. I just, I, I remember <laughs> going to that and I was like, wow, I'm into this life. I'm into this, this yeah. is what clubbing's about. All right, I'm into this. I definitely remember that. Um, somebody's asked if you would do a quarantine set. Uh, so, Ralph, could you create a quarantine set following Leeds in a city? How precious is that right now? So, I think, I don't know, some tunes which uh, have puns or anything connected to been locked in or maybe an uplifting one i'm not sure i'll leave that uh, well as far as like an actual mix and music in quarantine um it's out tomorrow i recorded my session before orbital playing before orbital at inner city electronic um and i've been sitting on it just like oh please get it out it's kind of, it's it's um it's in association with rebel rebel music and they're putting it out tomorrow so just if you just check kind of um you know, social pages, I'll, I'll, I'll put some links up to it tomorrow. Yeah. See, that, that's an exclusive. We'll take that. That's hot off the press. Uh, yeah. Someone said, what were your views on Craig Richards back to back with Nicholas Lutz? And would you consider bringing them on for a conference at Inner City? Oh, well, I always love those guys. You know, my, you know, two of my favourite DJs. So putting them on was just uh, was a pleasure. I mean, I, I didn't catch the start. I had to do the rounds. I was all over the shop. Um, like I, I always end up at wire. I'm always like, you know, that I'll be there till the end. So I got to wire, I think at around, I don't know, knocking on 6am and they were still going strong. I think they played till 9am. So I caught, I caught the last three hours and it was, yeah, they're just genius, aren't they? I loved it. Um, you know, we did record that as well. So I'm, I'm asking Craig if he'll release it. If you were, if you want to, if you want to ask him politely as well, you might, you might check, you know, he, uh, he might, he might, he might let us listen to it, but they're both like perfectionists. So I know if they're thinking like, you know, what they release. So we won't pressure them too much. But yeah, there is a recording of that somewhere. Uh, someone's just put Craig Richards, another great resident, and yeah. I think the final one was: Do you think a live stream element for live apps could be a way forward rather than sending out demos or similar for DJs to get noticed? I think you covered that, but uh, yeah, well, I just that. Just that weird, isn't it? Chat, so. it? But that's quite interesting that that idea popped into my uh, into my head naturally when and then someone else brings it up so yeah i think that i think that's a great way isn't it because the thing about me sitting here with my 2020 vision like record label head on is um you get sent lots of demos but you're, you're just seeing a soundcloud link right you're just hearing the music the music could be quite good but there's there's so much more there's so much more like story and plot that needs to go behind an artist you know what they like they're nice to deal with you know, um, what they like playing live, you know, can they DJ, can they perform live? Um, you know, what, what's their kind of like, you know, their outlook, what they like on, on, on their socials, what they say, and the whole thing's, the whole thing's important, isn't it? So I think with a stream, you're getting to see the whole package, aren't you? It's like, you know, you get to see them, which helps, you know, cause you can quite often tell by how a person looks, um, you know, what they're all about. Um, uh, and and I think you know I, yeah I think that I think that'll be a really good way to go. You you kind of create you're kind of creating a whole little um, um, what they call it's kind of like a whole little pitch, isn't it, for like promoters and, and record labels and and all the rest of it. Yeah, yeah, you're creating the spotlights on you, so you're putting yourself out yeah. in the best way by doing what you're doing. Definitely, I agree. Right, brother, 
thank you so much. And what an extra extra time added bonus going through questions and stuff. I love that. Well, that's yeah, he's going. It should be. You should. That's what you got to do, isn't it? Yeah. I got that. I got that watching. Uh, Ricky Gervais does like a tweet at six pm. Have you seen some of them? No. He just does like a little. Are you going to? You want to? I, I, I tell you what. You want to go back on um, Twitter? I had been on there for years, but I don't know for some reason I found it a good um, a good social media platform in 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 this at this moment because you know I, I do like Instagram, but I can, in all honesty, I just can never really be bothered with the whole stories thing. Just, to, just I've got like kids upstairs and I've got work to do, and I just can't, it's just all a bit of a to do. I can't. I don't have time, and I can't be bothered to be honest. Um, and and all I've got to do is post. We've got to get a picture, and there's got to be loads of tags. <laughs> it's all a bit of a to do, I and mean, I do like it. I do know everyone's on it, but the thing about Twitter is, it's just it's instant. What's in your head? One line, bang it out, boom, it's done. And then, but and it's, it's and then you get a chat quite quickly. So I've actually gone gone back on there, for, which is why you've missed uh, all that action. You could have got a gig. You've been you haven't been on Twitter. You've missed a gig there. Um, so um, you know. So I, uh, what was the point anyway? I can't remember the point now. <laughs> Something about what. I, about, uh, what were we talking about? I, think, I don't know how we got onto Twitter, to be fair. <laughs> I can't remember what we were going on about, though. It was about, um, what were we on about that oh, point? Oh, the questions, and you said Ricky Gervais. Questions, yeah. So anyway, so, so Ricky Gervais goes on then. And at 6pm, he does it as kind of an anti, like, you know, because the government do 5pm every, yeah. cr- not an anti, but it's just like he does his kind an of alternative. like, alternative. I'll cheer, an alternative, I'll cheer everyone up at 6 after the, fucking de- depressing hour you've just put yourself through which is some of them are you know some of them are really good um and obviously he's he's got millions of followers and it's the it's literally binging up you can't even you can't even like read how quickly it scrolls scrolls up with people's questions but he's got he's got quite a quick eye and he just picks out like the old one and then trying to kind of riffs on it but he might you know given it that it's ricky gervais you'll pick up one and just like you know kind of jam on it oh, a bit yeah. and turn it into yeah. like a bit of comedy so I, you know, I just um, nicked it off that, basically. And uh, Afterlife's out as well, I think, in end of this month or start of May, Afterlife 2. What was so, that, sorry? Uh, his, his Netflix uh, series, Afterlife, it's on in... Uh, yeah. it, it, the new yeah. series comes out uh, end of this month or start... That's yeah, true, end of yeah. This, I think end of this week. Yeah. I so liked it. Go. I really liked it. A lot of people said it was depressing and stuff. I thought there was I moments. Was this. It was brilliant, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was really heartfelt. It was really... We Forget DJ mixes. We can just have a chinwag about like what's the latest um, comedy or show on um, Netflix, can't we? That's exactly what we'll do from there. <laughs> Thank you as always, man. And uh, right, safety man. to you and your Take family. Care. Thank you for your time. And uh, I'll be in touch anyway just for a catch up with her. Nice one. we got to get the podcast going, right? Yeah, mate. It's we're looking into this Zoom idea. I like it. Actions. Actions, not words. There you go. Right. I'll give you a bell, right. brother. But thank you. Take it easy. Okay, nice one. Bye. See ya. Bye bye. As always, a top chat with Ralph. I love just, I just love his outlook and how he is about stuff, man. He's got his own way about it. And I always love to like delve into his mind and see his view on obviously current situations, but also how we evolve through it, really. So, a real good chat there to catch up with Ralph. If you want to see any of my other chats, and if you're new to me, I'm Ben Random. This is Loose Lips. This is my chat show here geared towards raising everyone's spirits and optimisms and reaching out to people to see a bit more about their life and how they've got on. So the first chat that I did today was director, photographer, Danny DeVille. And then the chat just before Ralph was the drummer of Liam Gallagher's band, Dan. So they're up on my lives for the next 24 hours. And then what I'll do is any of the chats that have been there, uh, I'll upload onto my YouTube and send them to the relevant people so that you can see them again. And then my chat next is with a gent called Ben Bowers, who is a expert tech, guitar tech spec uh, for the band Rival Sons, but he's got a lot of uh, great stories as well. Shouts, I'm never caught. I'm glad that you got on board. Stay safe, brother, and I'll catch you when all this is done. Thank you to everybody who's got involved with any comments in the chat. Amazing having your presence and energy. Uh, Stay cool, stay safe, stay indoors. Join me for my next chat. If not, I'll see you when I see you. Peace and light to you and yours.